So here's a model of the methane molecule. Uh, it's an alkane. And since hydrogen and carbon have approximately the same electronegativity, the covalent bond between them is shared equally. This is a nonpolar bond and a nonpolar molecule. So nucleophiles. Uh, nucleo, to do with the nucleus, is to do with positive things. So a nucleophile loves nuclei, loves positive things. And so the hydroxide ion is an example of a nucleophile. It loves positive things. It is, after all, negative. But it is not attracted to methane. Methane has no area of positivity. There's nothing positive about the methane molecule. So let's swap a hydrogen with the fluorine making fluoromethane. Now, can a nucleophile attack that? Well, fluorine has the highest electronegativity of any element, which means it loves electrons in bonds more than any other element. And so those electrons in the bonds move towards the fluorine. That now makes that fluorine a little bit negative, delta negative, and the remaining carbon is a little bit positive since those electrons have been pulled away from it in that bond. Now back to the nucleophile, the thing that loves positives. That's going to be attracted towards the carbon because now the carbon's a little bit positive. Now since this is a substitution reaction, we're going to switch to fluorine for the hydroxide. So the fluorine takes that pair of electrons in the bond with it, making the fluoride ion as one of the products, leaving behind a positive methyl ion. And this negative nucleophile, this negative hydroxide ion is now attracted towards it even more, and it's going to bond on. That lone pair on the oxygen becomes a dative covalent bond with the carbon. Remember, dative covalent bonds are formed when electrons in the covalent bond come from just one of the atoms in the bond, not from both of the atoms in the bond. That plus and that minus now cancel out, and we've made methanol. So we started with a halo alkane and a hydroxide ion, and after nucleophilic substitution, we made an alcohol and a halide ion. So sticking with the absolute minimum that the syllabus has in it, you have a halo alkane, for example, chloromethane, and it reacts with a nucleophile. The only nucleophile you need to know, according to the syllabus, is the hydroxide ion. And that, uh, since it's substitution, this and that will substitute. So it goes to CH3, OH, that's methanol, and the chloride ion. Now, that's my understanding, that's all you need to know. You don't need to know the mechanism, but the mechanism is in the noose book, and I have quite a lot of trust in that noose book. Other things that are in the noose book that don't appear to be in the syllabus is that there are different sorts of nucleophiles. There are different nucleophiles. Other things that are in the noose book that don't appear in the syllabus are other nucleophiles. For example, CN minus and uh, ammonia. Well, how's that a nucleophile? Well, it has a lone pair. Also in the noose book, they have the, uh, the mechanism that you just saw me do with Gary's mod. Uh, but the syllabus says the mechanism isn't needed. So what the hell are you confusing me, Thornley? Well, basically, this is what you need to know. Halo alkane, the one nucleophile you need to know about is the hydroxide ion, and it makes an alcohol, and then the halide ion.